Well, before the break, we told you about a new law in Florida that bans businesses from asking customers whether or not they're vaccinated against COVID-19. It's a big question right now. That's right. It could be a big issue for cruise lines who are considering requiring vaccinations anyway, even if that means racking up the fines in Florida. We want to have our panel weigh in on this. Joining us now, the author of Under Siege, No Finder, Finer Time to Be a Faithful Catholic, Austin Roos, founder of Patriot, Patriot Academy, Rick Green, and Dean of Business at Liberty University, Dave Brett. Dave, I will start with you. What happens when you have a private company and they want to do something that is, I guess, against the law at this point? Yeah, well, it, it's very important. Uh, you got to go back to first principles. Uh, and in my view, if you're going to take away someone's liberty, the burden is on you. And our and state law should back that up in theory. And so we need to start court cases immediately uh, to make sure that that is the order of operation. And, and so when the uh, corporate uh, lines, something like that, we need to make noise in the short run and then now uh, with in the intermediate. You know, my question, Rick, to you is simply this. Does my freedom end where your fear begins? Because I don't think it does. You know, because under that kind of, a, of an approach, we'd upset the apple cart in all sorts of ways. Uh, we can't live our lives in fear. We can't wear masks forever. And so where do you draw the line? How do you look at this? Well, I'm actually thankful that Ron DeSantis is protecting our health freedom and our privacy. Uh, you know, this is uh, this is all, all over a virus. I mean, vaccine passports, first of all, are a bad, I horrible idea, a tyrannical idea. They're meant to divide us. And in this case, it's all based on a virus that about 99.7 to 99.9 percent, .9%, depending on the data you believe, uh, are going to have no problem with. In fact, the people that get the natural immunity from getting COVID, uh, they have a better resistance and are less dangerous to anybody than someone that gets the vaccine. So why should that person not have the freedom to go on a cruise or, or eat in a restaurant? It's not about health. It is about control. It's about dividing us. That's what we're really dealing with here. And you're 100 percent right. My freedom and my liberty should not be um, affected by your fear. And if I'm not a danger to you, and as was just mentioned, there's been no proof, there's been no due process to prove that I'm a danger to you, then I should be able to live my life and enjoy my freedom. Well, Austin, I want to play off of that because fear is powerful. I was speaking to a young person over the holiday weekend, a young gentleman in his 20s, and he said, listen, until we have 100% of the people in the United States vaccinated, we can't just go freely about what we want to do. This is an idea that people have decided that this is what we have to go with. But the chances of 100% of the people getting vaccinated are pretty low. How do we make people <laughs> feel safe and, <laughs> and still live our lives? Well, you know, the chances of 100 percent of the people getting vaccinated is roughly zero. Uh, I'm not going to get vaccinated. I mean, I've had COVID and uh, I celebrate my antibodies. Uh, my daughter had COVID. She's got antibodies. You know, this shows a profound shift in the debate on both the left and the right. Corporations have become the enforcers of a left wing orthodoxy. I wrote a column many years ago called Corporations Are the Enemy. And for conservatives, increasingly, they are. And the other shift on the right is, is that conservatives are willing to use the power of government against corporations to protect individual liberty. And I think that's what we're seeing played out uh, in, in Florida. And I think that uh, that Ron DeSantis, DeSantis is, is gaining huge credibility uh, with uh, the base of the Republican Party as it stands today. Yeah, the the unholy alliance between big business and big government seems to be getting consummated more and more all the time. I agree with you on that point of view. Now, uh, let me uh, shift a little bit here. Uh, Texas, the latest state to work on making voter integrity more important, securing voting laws across that state and across the country. Of course, they've hit a roadblock for now. Democrats in the Texas legislature walked out so they couldn't have a quorum. Governor Greg Abbott does have the power to call a special session to start the process all over again, which he should. But we have been told that, you know, in Georgia, these are a bunch of Ku Klux Klan, white supremacist uh, people that are trying to be racist against blacks and Hispanics. I'm sorry. How difficult it is to get a, a ID. We just talked about COVID, for example. You have to have picture ID, Dave. You do to get a vaccination. Is that racist too? We know that you know 
Uh, communities of color had a tougher time fighting COVID than others. We've heard it over and over again. So was it racist to force people of color to have an ID to get their COVID-19 vaccines? I mean, if that's the logic, go with it, right? Yeah, well, no, that the, the Marxist logic is to get us wrapped up around the axles on conversations about race and sex and who's the bigot and all that kind of thing. Uh, if you're going to make a claim, uh, you should make an ethical claim and you should name the school of thought you filed up with in the United States. Uh, since Harvard, uh, with its inception, they followed truth, Christ, and church. And the U.S. founders followed that line of thought, et cetera. And we're going to find out that, that line uh, has done well and will do well uh, after they scare the daylights out of us this year. And so they're wrong on China. They're wrong on Wuhan. They're wrong on Russia. Uh, they're wrong on the epidemic. They're wrong on the scare tactics or using racial lines to solve problems, uh, making accusations, putting everyone in a different Marxist bucket. And uh, we need a whole Trump. Uh, too many people came in, became sheeple. Uh, and this country needs to gain its moral backbone and courage. And the American people will. They do always do the right thing after they've tried everything else, mm. as Churchill said. Well, Rick, we look at 2020, the 2020 election, and we see that even some of our secretaries of state were proven to be wrong in what they did. If you look at just stuff that happened across the country with absentee ballots, there were there were judges that said this was not right. This was against the law. So why are we getting so much pushback from folks on the left when people on the right are saying, hey, we want to make this as secure as possible. We want to make sure that people understand the law around voting and make sure that the votes are counted correctly and the votes are processed correctly. Why is this so offensive to folks on the left, Rick? Yeah, you're 100 percent right. I mean, when we step back and look at what, what's the purpose of all of this legislation across the country, it's to make sure that your vote counts, that every legal vote counts. We're trying to protect everyone's vote and make sure that it's not canceled out by an illegal vote. We should all be able to get behind that. And if you're afraid of being able to have transparency and verification and legal remedies to make sure those things are done, uh, we should all assume that you're wanting to do something that's mm -hmm. illegal. And, and we saw governors and secretaries of state violate the Constitution and violate their state laws last year and changing our election statutes on their own without the legislature involved. So I'm glad to see Georgia, Texas, some of these other states try to fix those things. I'm embarrassed as a Texan uh, that we weren't able to get it done. Look, the last time the Democrats ran from their job and went and hid to prevent a vote was in redistricting 20 years ago, back right after I was in the legislature. So we'll probably see a lot more of that coming up. But I have to say, as a proud Texan, I'm embarrassed to say this, but these bills that died in Texas over the last couple of days, it's the fault of Governor Abbott, Lieutenant Governor Patrick, and Speaker uh, Phelan. They did not get it done when they should have got it done, and they put it in the hands of the Democrats to be able to do this. So we need bolder leadership right, like Ron DeSantis in every state. We need to be looking at those primaries and getting good governors like DeSantis all across the country. Well, here's part of the problem that uh, Tudor and I are both familiar with because we both hail from Michigan. The Secretary of State in this state... Uh, made changes to mail-in balloting and a, and a whole host of other things, and it was found to be in violation of the law by a judge. The problem is there's no penalty for it. Okay, right. you, you did this, you're not allowed to do this. What's the penalty? Well, there isn't one. It's quite a law you got there for the politicians. I don't know of any law that applies to me for which there is no penalty if you violate said law, but Austin, uh, bring us home on this one. It seems to me that uh, the Democrats not just in Texas, but across the country, realize that coming in 2024, Texas will have 40 electoral votes. Uh, Florida will have 30. Collectively, they'll have significantly more political power than California. And that does scare the daylights out of those on the left. And I think that's what's, that's what's really going on here. Your thoughts? Well, I, I am a, I'm a social conservative. I mostly work on life and family issues. But heading into the next election, I think the two most important issues are uh, election integrity and uh, the, the imposition of, of a leftist agenda by corporations. Uh, so, yes, I, th I think you're exactly right. I mean, they are using, you know, I saw a man on the street interview not long ago. Uh, uh, somebody went into Harlem and asked uh, black folks on the street if they had ID or if they knew where they could get an ID or where they knew, if they knew where the DMV was. And of course, to a man and woman, they laughed in the guy's face 
and said, of course I've got ID. Of course I know where the DMV is. Of course I know how to use the internet. So, uh, you know, the, the left is, is using a, a truly racist notion that African Americans don't know how to get ID, don't know how to vote, don't know how to find the DMV. So I, I, I think that, uh, yeah, this, this is this is a kind of a wicked issue. Sadly, they're getting a lot of uh, a lot of traction in some mm -hmm. of the states. So we should uh, we should all yeah. fight back. Mm -hmm. Yes, we should. Thank you so much, Austin Roos, Rick Green, and Dave Bratt. We appreciate having you on today and having your voice here on America's Voice Live. Everyone else, stay tuned because we've got world news coming up after the break. <laughs>